Let's talk vendor events. Vendor events include any occasion when you will have a booth or table to share Osborne books and more with other people. They can be craft fairs, business expos, fairs and festivals, and more. The type of event and what you're hoping to accomplish can dictate what your space looks like, and fortunately for us, UBAM gives us flexibility when it comes to how we run our spaces. You can find vendor opportunities through a variety of different means. Facebook groups are popular choices, and many states or regions will have their own groups dedicated to these kinds of events. You can also search for websites that list local events, check out your community newspaper, or ask around to other local business people. There are a couple of rules Home Office has put into place regarding vendor events. These rules are designed to protect consultants who have built a relationship or following at particular events or locations. First, if you find a vendor event you are interested in joining, you should ask if another Osborne Books and Con More consultant has already signed up, or if there was a consultant who participated in the same event the previous year. Consultants who worked the event previously have first priority to work the event this year as well. If that consultant decides not to participate or has not submitted an application within 30 days of the event, you may then apply. If no UBAM consultant has signed up, and no consultant worked the event previously, you may also apply. The second rule applies to events involving schools and libraries. Because only educational services representatives can offer programs and services to schools and libraries, there has been a lot of confusion over vendor events. The rule from Home Office, however, indicates that a consultant who is not an ESR can do a vendor event in the following situations. One, the school or library cannot be listed. You can check to see if a school or library is listed by using the listing search found in the Educational Services tab in Back Office. 2. You are purchasing a space as any other business or company would and are paying for a space to sell your wares or promote your business. 3. You cannot offer any programs or services to the school or any faculty or groups within the school unless you are an educational services representative. This means book fairs, fundraisers, etc. 4. The first rule regarding previous consultants still applies. Once you've found an event you'd like to work with and have had your application accepted, it's time to get ready. The first step to preparing for your event is determining what kind of space you would like to have. You can opt to have an informational space in which you have a few sample books, catalogs, and handouts and talk to people about the company and what you can offer. Or you can have a cash and carry space in which you have a variety of books on hand to sell on the spot. Of course, you can also opt to have a combination of the two. Let's discuss the different options. Informational spaces. Whether the event dictates that you cannot sell items at the event, or you choose to rely on orders and bookings, an informational space requires more involvement from you, the consultant. Not only will you need to have information on hand to share with visitors, but you will also need to engage them, draw them in, and get them excited about the books. Get ready to smile, greet everyone who walks by, and ask questions. Some items you will want to have available at your space are sample books for a variety of ages and interests, catalogs, business cards, order forms, signage discussing hosting, joining your VIP group or business page, and recruiting, host packets to give to anyone who books a party, a way to get visitors information, whether that be a mailing list sign-up form, a general interest form, or a raffle with info forms as entry tickets. Some optional items are branded banners or signs, handouts such as bookmarks and stickers, a tablet that is connected to the internet so anyone who wants to place an order or join your VIP group right away can do so. Cash and carry spaces. Booth spaces that involve selling definitely require more planning. Not only do you need the informational resources, but you also need the books you're going to sell, ways to display the books, a way to keep track of sales, cash on hand to make change, a credit card reader, the list goes on and on. Let's take things one step at a time. Inventory. If you are out of your incentive period, the easiest way to get inventory to sell is through consignment. 
This enables you to have a wide variety of books on hand without having to pay out of pocket for them. Once you have sold the books, then you can reconcile your consignment and pay off what you owe. If you are still within your incentive period, consignment is not an option, but there are other ways to get stock to sell. The first way is to purchase the books outright. This means placing an order and paying for them. If you opt to go this route, be sure to enter your order as a book fair and order pro. Doing so will help you save money as you can get 50% in free books as long as you're ordering at least $250 worth. If you're unsure how to do this, reach out to myself or your team leader. Another option is to partner with another consultant who has inventory or can take out consignment and split the vendor space with them. You can opt to split costs and sales or split the work, having the other consultant handle the cash and carry and having yourself talk to visitors and book parties or recruit. The last option is to reach out to other local consultants and see if another consultant is willing to let you borrow or purchase inventory from them. Though not ideal in terms of sales numbers or profit, it can be a good last resort if you need stock quickly. So what should you have on hand to sell? How much should you get? Which books? Unfortunately, there are no easy answers to those questions, as there are many variables that can affect things. The first variable is the size of the event. How many people are expected to attend? What kind of event is it? Will people be shopping with the intent to purchase or window shopping? Is the vendor portion part of a larger event that will draw most of the crowd? Smaller events, of course, require less inventory. Larger events at known shopping destinations require more. Use your best judgment and your comfort level as guidelines to determining how much to get. With regards to which books to get, you'll want to have a variety on hand. Make sure you cover books for all ages, birth up through teen. Get an assortment of fiction, nonfiction, and activity books. But don't go too crazy with one particular area, unless it strongly relates to the event you're attending. Mini books, only available through Order Pro, tend to be popular, as their lower price point makes them ideal for impulse buys. If there is a particular book or series that you love, pick up multiple copies and introduce them to people who stop by your booth. Your excitement and love for the book will help sell it. Shine lights can be popular, but only if you're prepared to demonstrate them. They're easy to miss otherwise. Set up a flashlight nearby to pique curiosity. Have a busy book set up to draw attention and get kids playing, with a few available to sell to parents whose kids have been engaged. Pick up a couple of books that will draw attention, such as What is Poop? Flap books, sticker books, and wipe clean books are also popular choices. If your event is around the holidays, have some holiday titles on hand, especially popular titles that always sell out. Once you've determined what you're going to have available to sell, the next step is to determine how you're going to display them. The size and shape of the space will often dictate how you can display the books, but there are a few rules of thumb that can help guide you. 1. Face as many books out as possible. While you can consolidate and have spines facing when space is limited, visitors are much more likely to stop and look if they see covers. Covers draw more attention. Two. Build your display up. Flat tables are boring and easy to miss. Stand books up. Have tiered racks or stack crates. Find ways to make your display vertical. Not only does this give you more space to display your books, but it is also more visually appealing, making it more likely that visitors will stop to browse. 3. Stay organized. Clutter and mess will make it hard to see anything, and if people do stop to browse, it is more than likely Books will get damaged if shoppers have to sift through stacks and piles. With these rules in mind, you will likely want to pick up some tiered display racks to help showcase your inventory. Display racks can rest on the floor or sit on tables. I like to use a combination of the two. In back office, you can find some tabletop cardboard racks. These three tiered displays are inexpensive and can come in handy. They are best equipped to display chunky books or other short titles. Tall, thin books tend to slide and flop. For these books and others, I have had better luck with metal wire racks I purchased from Amazon. If space is a concern, you can also store and display books in wooden or plastic crates. Crates are great for holding a large number of books with their spines facing out. Thick books, such as flat books, tend to be the best for crates, as their wide spine makes them easy to read. Thin books tend to get lost. 
Crates can also come in handy for building height as you can stack them or stand books on, up inside or on top of the crates themselves. Okay, so we've covered the books and how to display them. Now we need to go over how to sell them. You'll want some way to keep track of sales. Order Pro offers carbon copy order pads under business supplies, and these will likely be sufficient. Which methods of payment will you accept? Cash is universally accepted, but you'll want to have change on hand for cash paying customers. Though less common, some customers may want to pay with a check. You will need to decide if you're willing to accept checks. Keep in mind there is some risk involved. If you do accept checks, be sure you get a phone number or other way to contact the customer in the event of an issue. These days, most customers will expect you to accept credit cards. This means you'll need a way to process them. If you have a smartphone, it is easy to get a card reader for free or very inexpensively. Square is a popular reader and service, and you can get a Square card reader for free. Personally, I use the PayPal Here card reader and app and have for several years. There are other services out there as well, though these two are the most popular. Both of these services will charge fees for processing cards, though you may be able to get a promotional code to get a limited amount of free processing with Square. To accept cards, you will want to install the appropriate app on your phone. The card reader plugs into the headphone jack or lightning jack on your phone. If you have a newer phone that does not have a headphone jack, you'll need to get an adapter that gives you one. Open the app, enter the sale, and swipe the card. Provided you have Wi-Fi or a data signal, you will get instant approval or denial. Once the sale is complete, you're all set. You may want to have bags on hand for customers who purchase multiple books. You can find branded bags in Order Pro, or you can pick up generic thank you bags from a local office supply store. And that's about it. Just a few general tips I would like to leave you with. First, smile and be positive. People are drawn toward friendly looking people. Stand up as much as possible and don't stare at your phone. You want to look interested and approachable. Dress in business casual. You want to look professional, but not stuffy. Engage with as many people as possible. Ask them about the readers in their lives, what their interests or challenges are, and what kinds of books they enjoy. Offer guidance and suggestions when appropriate. Talk to the kids. Not only can they offer insight on what they're interested in, but engaging them gives the parents an opportunity to shop without worrying about their kids wandering off. Share the company, products, and opportunity, but don't do all the talking. Ask questions and listen. Don't be shy and have fun. We have a great product and a great company, and we truly want to help children. You're doing this because you love these books and love sharing them. Let it show.